this short video, I'd like to illustrate how to use the hatch tools and at least provide a basic overview of some of the functionality within them. So when I click on the rectangle up here, I'm just going to draw a simple shape, like so. <clears throat> and then I'm going to click into the hatch tool. So when adding a hatch, there's several different ways that you can do this. You can pick a point, and if you kind of just hover, I haven't left click yet, but if you just hover inside of it, you'll get a preview of what that looks like. So if you zoom in, you can see it actually is a cross hatching. <clears throat> if you select the profile, and then later on decide, mm, you know, I didn't want that, you could also choose to remove it. So you just select the boundary, and you remove it. You can also select an object. So instead of picking an internal point, if you have like a closed polyline, for example, you could click on that to select the hatching as well. So whether you're previewing or you've actually clicked in the boundary to add a hatch, the next step in the process typically is to select what kind of hatch pattern you want. So you'll see there's a slew of different types of hatches <clears throat> ranging from completely filling it solid to different types of cross hatching like this one which oftentimes denotes steel <clears throat> or you can come down here to find a very specific type of pattern and as I scroll down the list you can see different objects as well and then you, you also can get gradients so if you wanted to show like a heat source or generic heat mapping you could do stuff like that So once you've selected, and I'm going to go ahead, I'll pick like um, stone. Once you've selected the hatch, then you can come to the right and you can kind of experiment with different options. You can change the color. You can uh, do like a fill color. You can change it if you want it to be transparent, meaning it looks like it's see-through, etc., etc. You can also experiment with the angle. You can either key it in or you can type in a number, say 45, and now the brick pattern is at 45 degrees. <clears throat> Another thing that you can do is you can experiment with the size. So right now we're at a one-to-one -one scale. So whoever created this hatch pattern, we're using it sized exactly the way it's supposed to be. But if we type in, say, four, now each one is four times larger than it was previously. And there are other properties that you can experiment with down here as far as like putting it on a particular layer, which it is a good plan to put hatching on a particular layer because then you can uh, quickly use the layer controls, etc. To, con to determine whether or not hatching is there, frozen, things of that nature. Now when you do have a pattern like the brick, if we kind of zoom in, we can see that it doesn't look quite right. Like we're beginning with a sliver as our foundation. That's not a good call. So for some patterns, you may want to set the origin. And so if I click on the set origin, I can pick the bottom left corner, and now the hatch pattern actually starts from that bottom left corner. So, so far so good. Uh, the hatch pattern tool does have associativity. We'll talk about what that means in a second. And it's annotative, meaning if you use annotation scaling in your drawings, you can have the hatch pattern scale as well as you change the viewport scales, etc., of your drawing. So I'll see, leave it at there for now. I'm going to go ahead and close it. And so it produces a hatch pattern. And when it's an associative hatch pattern, it really only has this one grip. And you can hover on it and you can experiment with different things, play with the origin point, scale it, etc. But it's actually associative, it's tied to the object. So if I change the outer boundary of my object even a little bit, the hatch pattern will adapt to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete this hatch pattern and I'm going to apply a circle. So when I do the hatch pattern this time and I pick a point, depending on what your settings are, and those are controlled here, called island detection, you can actually have hatch patterns go around obstructions in your design. So I haven't left clicked yet, but you can clearly see the hatch pattern will go around the circle. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and pick it and I'm going to turn off associativity. So I'll turn that off and hit close. Now when I pick the hatch pattern, it has all kinds of grips. So what ends up happening is I can move the boundary and the hatch pattern has developed its own boundary. So this is what happens when the hatch pattern is not associated to the original object. <clears throat> now I'm going to delete these last few and I'm going to draw one more example. Just measure that gap quickly so it's just in a quarter of an inch I can survive that so what happens is sometimes you'll go to hatch a shape and it won't let you because it's not a closed boundary so what you can do is you can play with the gap tolerancing and if you do have a hatch even with the gap it says it's not closed but what do you want to do because I've got it within that hatch boundary range I can actually hatch a non-closed area. So just be wary of that, but it is possible to do it. So I just wanted to give you a few tools for the hatch pattern, just a basic overview. Hopefully you found this instructive and helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me. Otherwise, have a blessed day.